Well, after that delay, <laughs> as I got up to close my door, um, lots of noise outside here. So this is Lowell Ann, and I'm welcoming you to the Being Your Own CEO Success Circle, intended especially for solopreneurs. And this morning we're going to look at how to make money online. And I guess my question is, how many ways are there? We'll be right back after this.
Hello everyone, this is your host Loa Lan and greetings to uh, panel members who are present. Uh, I hope everything is going well in your part of the world. So uh, as usual, we will begin with some uh, introductions so that our viewers will know who is here. So I will get started by saying that in my coaching and consulting work, I help solopreneurs who want more from their business. We um, overcome that feeling of overwhelm and procrastination that often sets in for solopreneurs. And um, we, as we work on um, bringing that business mastery plan into a joyful reality. So, um, let's see. Fred, how would you like to go first this morning? All right, I muted myself finally. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. I'm not used to going first, so you caught me unaware. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Fred Jones. <laughs> I'm uh, in Victoria, British Columbia, or just on the side near where Jay is, which is the sunny side, according to Jay. <laughs> And I'm involved with coaching and encouraging group sessions for young people to learn all those skills they're really going to need as they enter adulthood because the world's changing so much and what they're about to face is nothing like any other generation's face. So they need to learn to communicate, work together, and become leaders. So I'm excited about helping them. And as I think I mentioned last week, I'm even more excited about going to Portugal and September, where there's a group of people interested in doing that as well as other things. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm, right um, on. The weather is quite nice in Victoria today. So yes. Been... Yes, except it was quite, it was sort of foggy down along Dallas Road this morning. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, this is the sunny side. I'm on. Ah, uh, yeah, right. No, fog. no fog over there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm glad you made it here this morning, Fred. And so uh, as I'm, uh, I've got my the comments up, I see that Paul Murray is in the audience. Greetings, Paul. Long time no see. <laughs> I hope you'll be able to make it uh, join us at some time, uh, sometime soon. Uh, let's see, Javita, how would you like to introduce yourself? Namaste all of you. I am uh, Javita from India. I am a um, Reiki master teacher and also a yoga teacher. And I have a uh, website about Reiki, that is reikiamazis.com. And I'm really happy to be here. Ah, right on. How are things in Mumbai? Uh, it's fine. Not very good, but okay. <laughs> okay. Right on. Is it is, is it 40, 40 degrees, degrees or something like, like that? that? Yeah, around that early. <laughs> 40 degrees, that's hot. And it's really, really humid in Mumbai, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, have news, I have news for you. You'd think 40 is hot. Uh, for one summer, I lived in La Paz in Mexico. Temperatures went up to 45. Oh my God. Not a joke. 45 degrees, 70% humidity, virtually no wind. Oh. <laughs> That's hot. Yes. <laughs> it was my first and last summer in La Paz. <laughs> right. Well, uh, Nathan, while you're there, why don't you, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Yes, that was quite the introduction. But yeah, my name is Nathan. I'm uh, hailing to you from Buscarias, the state of Nayarit in Mexico. My thing is book publishing and showing people how to position themselves as experts in any industry by uh, publishing a book. Hmm, right on. So glad you made it, Nathan. Thank you. Let's see, Vivek. How are things in the UK? Namaste. My name is Vivek Anand. I am proud to share my belief with uh, Steve Jobs and Leonardo da Vinci who said, simplicity is the ultimate in sophistication. I aim to bring time-tested wisdom and happiness together. 
into your business and life by unifying, simplifying, and amplifying simple technology and tools. Wake Technology Private Limited is my company. Together, let us wake up your potential. So that's about me. Um, I'm in England, UK, and uh, the temperature here is uh, it says 23.8 degrees centigrade, which is uh, <laughs> 60, maybe 70. As per this. 70. Yeah, right on. <laughs> We all have this giggle between um, Celsius and Fahrenheit. <laughs> Nobody ever ever knows how to translate. <laughs> and you know, I mean, in the way, the weights and measures and all of that. Uh, I mean, rather than trying to convert, I just have two sets of everything in my kitchen: yeah. <laughs> tablespoons and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so um i i'm and i grew up in fahrenheit so mm. uh, i remember well when we changed to uh celsius yeah <laughs> yeah me too i, I think I it was around you. 11 years old when it happened something yeah. like that. but you know for those of you listening here my father came up with a really cool formula for doing conversions from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, which is really simple. Double it and add 30. Double so it and add 30. Yep. So if it's 20 degrees, double it, that's 40. Add 30, you have 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. And it's almost exactly right every single time. It's within two or three degrees of being right. Oh, you're kidding. Well, yep. thank you. That that will that will solve our problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt it will solve many problems, yeah. It, it's just... <laughs> I don't know where he got it from, but it was just like, oh, cool, I, I can use that. <laughs> right. Well, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. When you go the other way, do you divide it by two and subtract 30? I don't know. He didn't tell me that part. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't care because, I mean. You, you know, probably going, have to going, subtract 30, then add uh, half it. Going going the other way is you know pretty easy. Hmm. So I know in my head, like like uh, 90 degrees would be about 28 or 30 Celsius. So um, I do the switch real fast. That oh, way. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> well, down here, you know, I mean, it's like that all the time doing conversions. Yeah. And not only that, between that and the money, for example. <laughs> oh, yes. 200, like 200 pesos. So at one point, you could do this, yeah. but not um... more. Like 200, you could just chop off a zero and you'd have 20, which is the equivalent of 20 bucks. Not anymore, sorry. <laughs> 200 pesos is the, the equivalent of about $10 US. Mm. So, so it doesn't work so well. No. Uh, why do, why, it, it wouldn't it be nice if it were a universal standard? <laughs> yeah, but that would make too much sense. I guess, right. <laughs> right. Okay, we haven't finished our intros here. Uh, David, how would you like to? And we uh, we love your background. You've got uh, uh, David is sporting a new virtual background. Yep. Uh, put in the lights and the, and the uh, green screen this week and actually yesterday. Uh, got everything figured out and put together. And now, except for one thing, my rod's a little short. So uh, curtain rod is a little short. So now I need to... Um, Purchase a new one and um, extend it so that I can get the full green screen effect. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Dave Flannery. I'm with the uh, affordable websites for small business and uh, Sock Valley or United Country Sock Valley Realty Team Flannery. I also monitor the chat and um, mm -hmm. uh, and post when we when someone refers to someone else or a website or something like that i'll i hunt it down and put it in the chat mm -hmm. um i talking to loan this morning we just uh would like to encourage people to put their website in so that we have enough comments from different people so that the chat will will stay and you'll get a small backlink so 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good point, David. <laughs> Backlinks are um, are useful, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I uh, we we haven't figured out yet whether um, what what is it that um, YouTube um, makes YouTube include the the um, live chat in the in the recording. In some we we we've kind of narrowed it down to it's either the number of people or the number of and uh, comments that were added. We haven't figured that out yet. There doesn't seem to be um, all of my research I've done. I have not been able to find the answer to the question. <laughs> so we met, but we've narrowed it down to those two. So, <laughs> so um, thank you, David. And yes, I encourage well, everyone uh, while they're here to go in and put their website. Um, post their website address in there. So, Alana, how are you this morning in Ireland? You mean this afternoon? <laughs> right, or this evening. <laughs> yeah, it's about quarter after five here. I'm Alana in Ireland. My website is emptynesterblog.com and ALV Digital Marketing Solutions. Uh, where I help people with their online businesses and I help empty nesters in particular um, make money online with all that extra time they may have on their hands. So um, using Nathan's uh, calculation, it's about 10 degrees here, which is about 50 Fahrenheit, and it feels like autumn as opposed to spring or even summer. Oh. So um, mm -hmm. not really much of a happy camper for me. Sunny and it's sunny, but it's just windy and cold. Mm. Go figure. But that's yeah. the way it is. Yeah. So happy you're here. Thank you. Now happy I just here. just need to make sure I've covered everybody. Have I covered everybody? I think I have. So this morning, well, actually, uh, let's, let, let me um, sort of go back to last week. We um, finished off by, um, I finished off by saying to everybody, somebody come up with a topic for next week. <laughs> and I think it was Jay who said, well, how to make money online. <laughs> so... As I started thinking about that, I uh, I guess the question is, how many ways are there? And um, I can um, uh, let you know about, some, uh, actually it would be nice for me to let you know about uh, a recent project that uh, I've been working on that I'm hoping is going to be a way to make money online. I haven't, uh, I don't know that yet, but so what I have done is created a course on my Being Your Own CEO um, website uh, called Create a Business Mastery Plan. And um, I did it by using a, a WordPress plugin called LearnDash. And um, I decided, um, I guess it was really based on some things I've heard Jay say many times, like do things on your own real estate rather than on somebody else's. So, I mean, there are lots of other platforms like Thinkific and a few others that are, you know, that where you can create a course, but then that means you have to link to it. Whereas if you're using this Learn Dash plugin, the course is hosted right on your own website. So uh, it's been quite a learning curve. Never mind a learning dash. Let's talk about learning curve. <laughs> so um, I think I have it pretty well set up. And uh, you can also set it up so that uh, you can charge for it. Uh, so learn dash allows you to, um, uh, or allows the viewer to pay uh, using PayPal or Stripe. So. Uh, it's been quite a quite an exercise. Um, it is just a lovely, um, easy uh, plug-in. It's just yeah. So um, 
so I guess um, in answering my own question, how many ways are there? Well, you can create a course and sell the course. So um, that's my contribution. What about others? Hey, Nathan, I know that you're working on, on something, so. Yeah, actually, it been working on something to do with my writing process because I came up with uh, an idea of writing a book quickly and it's based on a technique that I learned from one of my colleagues, a guy by the name of Mike Kiernings. And Mike uh, created a product called Trafficizer and he created a document that goes with it called the 10 by 10 by 4 uh, method, which has to do with creating video. And anyway, uh, without getting into all the detail of it, um, I've been looking at my process and thinking, yeah, I, I, I want to scale, okay? And with what I'm doing right now, the way that I'm working, I can't, impossible. Um, I can raise my prices, but that only goes so far. Mm -hmm. I still get stuck. So what I'm working on is taking my entire process, turning it into a document, a form rather, with all the instructions that one would need to write out the various steps. <clears throat> And then at the end of it, a submit button, where they submit it, formats the content into the appropriate look and feel. And then after that, I can use some other software to turn it into a finished book. Mm. But So if I automate it in that way, I mean, it's not entirely automated, but automated, it, it would be perfect for the do-it-yourself kind of person. Mm -hmm. But there will be some people who will want more, hand-holding, coaching, whatever. Yeah. So might be a couple of packages that I'm using to help people get it done. But it will free me up from having to work one on one with every single person. Mm -hmm. And if I start getting large numbers of people asking me to do it, initially it'll start one on one until I build traction. Then I'm going to switch it into group coaching mm -hmm. so that I can handle the, the greater demand and still help people get their stuff done. And if even in the group coaching, people are saying, well, it's not enough, I need more, then I'm going to start building a team of coaches to work with me to help help them with the uh, the, uh, the the stuff that they, they need. So that's basically what I'm doing. Mm, right on. Yeah. So interesting that you would mention uh, group coaching because, well, even individual coaching, you can do that online. Of course. So uh, I've been doing everything online. Yes. Yeah. I certainly can't work from where I am. I don't have permission to work in Mexico. Uh, but going online, I've been doing that. I mean, mm -hmm. this is nothing new. No. I've been working online and selling online for over 20 years. Yeah. Uh, it's nothing new at all. The, the only thing that was new, which was around 2004, 2005, was when I was in a relationship breakup. And I remember saying to my girlfriend at the time, you know, I don't need to live in Victoria anymore. I can work anywhere, uh, so long as I have a laptop and decent internet. Now, mm -hmm. in Mexico, all those years ago, I didn't actually know if that was true. But seven months before, they had just gotten uh, cable internet, and I signed up for the service. And when I got it set up in my apartment, and then I had this little telephone thing way back then, it was considerably clunkier. But I remember calling a buddy of mine in Victoria. And we hadn't talked for a while. So, oh, great, how are you doing? Blah, 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 the usual pleasantries. And he said, so what, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm calling you from my apartment in Mexico. And he said to me, you sound like you're next door. And I said, well, actually, no. I'm about 3,000 miles away from you, and I'm looking out my window, and an iguana sunning itself on the roof next door. <laughs> and um, so at that moment, I knew that I could actually make it work. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of working online, making money online, I've been making all my money from freelance writing for magazines all over the world. So leading into your topic, and I mean, when I first started, it was for print and then very quickly things changed into online. And some of the people I work for only are online mm -hmm. and do not have print at all anymore. So it completely changed the landscape. And now it's like, it's still a mixture of print and online, depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. But but with this kind of thing, so long as I have a decent laptop or a laptop and a neat, decent internet connection, I can work from anywhere and make money. And, no 
and the, you know the advantage to that I, I think Bill ran into the same thing like it, uh, as an expat uh, in some countries you don't have permission to you can't get a job That's so true. the only way that you can work is online well you can work here there are visas available for that mm. but I chose not to mm -hmm. and I also wound up in a really bizarre situation a loophole um, to do with my life um, in terms of paying income tax mm. and because of that loophole that I discovered by accident so we'll put it this way um, if you do not make any money from Canada and you do not make any money from Mexico you uh, file to become a non-resident of Canada for income tax purposes and you make your money from the United States and other sources you no longer have to pay income tax in Canada, you're off the radar. Zero for you. And it's a loophole I found by accident. Really? Totally by accident. Yeah, and when I discovered it, I thought, you must be kidding me. But uh, I discovered it was real. And I met some other people last summer who did the same thing as me. And it's very much real. But it only works if you have an online business. You mm -hmm. can't do it if you've got bricks and mortar. Right, right. And, uh, there are other there are other limitations, but I fell into a system completely by accident, mm -hmm. which allowed me to get right off the radar screen. I did, and I applied to become a non-resident last summer, hmm. but there was another reason for it is because of major harassment by the CRA over a period of years, and I was sick to death of them, and I wanted them out of my life. And the only way I could do it was to become a non-resident. Right. So. I chose it, and uh, and it was accepted, and that's it. So, and of course, uh, uh, Bill, when he was living in Belize, um, he, uh, the, like, there were all kinds of hoops that he had to go through in order to be able to even start a business in Belize or have a business in Belize. So um, uh, doing things online was the only way he was able to do anything either. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it depends on where you are, mm -hmm. uh, what the uh, opportunities are. But uh, that was another part that I didn't mention. So long as, uh, like, if you become a non-resident for tax purposes, you still have to give the CRA an address. No problem. I give them my girlfriend's address. But in terms of um, the way you would live down here, it would be on a tourist card or resident to retired. Mm -hmm. You use the one or one or both of those. And you're making your money online. You're not making it from Canada. You're not making it from Mexico. And you're doing it through other sources. You fall right off the radar for, uh, in terms of income tax. Interesting. You wind up with uh, an enormous amount of flexibility. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's not something that I talk about very much, but I discovered it completely by accident, and it's like, wow, this is really cool. Hmm. Um, and so, it, for someone like myself, it gives me a tremendous amount of flexibility. And when I actually filed for my paperwork, I had a debt owing hmm. uh, to, to Revenue Canada, but the auditor or former auditor I work with uh, told me that sometimes they wipe these things out, sometimes right. they change everything. and. When I went to check my status a little over a month ago, I discovered that everything was at zero. Oh. Everything. So, across. Nathan, we're off topic here. We need to get I back know. on, on track is, here. It is about making money online. Yeah. And it's also about dealing with very important things like tax obligations. Just because you leave Canada, for example, if you don't sever your ties, then you are liable to pay income tax in Canada regardless of where you go. So it's a very important consideration. Mm -hmm. It's not completely off topic at all. Because well, if you don't have to pay tax, look at what happens to your income. Mm -hmm. uh, I could I could counter that with a few other things, which I'm not going to do right now because no. uh, we want to talk about the ways that we can um, earn money online. So, um, who else? David, what about, oh, David is just uh, <laughs> clicked out. <laughs> what, Alana, what about you? What, what, uh, can you, uh, are, 
You're, you're... Well, I actually, I, I actually do uh, a lot of articles on this. So my empty nester blog.com art, um, website is full of, if you don't mind me plugging myself. Go here. right ahead. Um, so yeah, I write a lot about ways to make money online and, and for empty nesters who are, you know, their kids are gone to, off to college, they moved away, whatever. They've got all this free time on their hands. There's a lot of different ways you can, you can, um, you know, do things in your community or when you're doing something online you can do um, typing transcription surveys um, god what else have i written about all kinds of stuff um, building your own website um, creating your own amazon shop online all that kind of stuff that can make you money online and there's tons of tons of places now you don't get paid a lot a lot of times these places and because they are online they tend to pay crap but um, depending on how many of them you have going at any one time, you can you can parlay that into some money, mm -hmm. you know. And it, again, it depends on what your goals are. Some people are just looking to make money for a vacation or buy Christmas presents at the end of the year. Um, if you're looking to pay bills and like create an actual income that is sustainable, then the way the way to do that would be through building your own website and your own actual business online as most mm -hmm. everybody here has so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, um i guess um some of the things that you mentioned i guess we would ro roll up into um the the term of uh, being a virtual assistant yeah like yeah. that's one of the things that i did that's kind of where i started and that was strictly by accident where i found some a friend contacted me and was starting their own um, consulting firm and asked me to do work for them and I said mm -hmm. yeah of course I'll work for you so and because it, it, it works really well as a virtual assistant because if you're in a different time zone you can get work done while they're sleeping so that worked really well for me because these mm. guys were in California so <laughs> yeah, that... know, they would send me stuff at 5 o'clock and then it's in their inbox at 8 o'clock the next morning because I'm 8 hours ahead of them so yeah, that's really efficient for them, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And you. <laughs> yeah. It works out well for me, too. Yeah. Cool. I mean, the reality is that there are endless ways to make money online. It depends on what it is that you want to do mm -hmm. and what your resources are. I mean, when I first began, it was all about freelance writing for magazines mm -hmm. corporations. But later, I... Uh, here in Mexico, I took a course that was uh, about internet marketing, and the number one thing I learned about was joint ventures. Mm -hmm. And I did a joint venture with the Corel Corporation in Canada while I was in Mexico. And I pitched them on a project, they accepted, and the end result was an ebook along with two hours of video. They sold over 11,000 copies of it, and I made over $90,000 in royalties from that one day. Mm -hmm. And so that was all done uh, through the internet and email and pitching. Uh, and one of the most powerful forms of marketing is the joint venture. Mm. And if you learn how to do it and you know how to do it correctly, and there is a lot of legwork involved to get the right relationships. Quite often there are unfortunately a lot of posers out there. Mm -hmm. But if you are able to create the right relationships with people, you can wind up with a tremendous amount of business. And the wonderful thing about a joint venture, if you do it in a certain way, you work once and you could get paid 40,000, 50,000, 100,000, 2 million times hmm. for one piece of work. So the joint venture is making use of uh, a different form of affiliate marketing where you're not just an affiliate for somebody else's product, you create a product or service you find a like-minded party who's got a really big list. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, you do a 50-50 split. Now, my deal with Corel was um, $10 per thing sold. And I remember thing, I, I said yes without really knowing all the details. But when they sent me their sales records, they said that we would be selling between five to 700 units a week. And I thought, you're kidding me. Sorry. Until they actually put it into play. And when they put it into play, in three weeks, I made $16,900. And then the same year, they put it into play for two months, and I made $54,500. Mm. I'm sitting on my butt. So, <laughs> seriously, 
but it's just oh yeah that's like when you when you contrast a joint venture with creating say an ebook e and selling it on Amazon which of yeah. course you, you can do yeah. you're not going to get all the profit from that but also you're not going to make a lot of money when you sell an ebook e e or even a hard copy book on Amazon so Agreed. I mean a joint venture is worth exploring for sure if, if you if you have something you, you can write about it and sell it mm -hmm. off you know yeah there's joint venture there's another thing that some of you may not know much about a guy by the name of Stephen Key, K-E-Y, and one of the things he gets into is licensing. And the joint venture thing that I did was essentially a form of licensing. Same idea, different words. But if you start looking, you change your mindset about looking for a job or looking to build a career, or you start looking into like what I'm working on right now. Uh, it involves automation, it involves uh, repetition, it involves creating something that can be sold many, many thousands or hundreds or millions of times. When you start looking at things in that way and you start uh, finding the different markets, you start to realize that there's an enormous amount of potential there and opportunity, but a lot of people aren't aware of this stuff. And so you, you talk about funnels, click funnels, it's a big thing going on. Mm -hmm. 100,000 members in their community and so on. But that's just one aspect of the story. And there's so many bits and pieces, ways of making money. Like um, one book I'd recommend to you guys is called Web Marketing That Sells by Maria Veloso. But a huge bit is email marketing because one of the things that people do if they build a website where they sell a product, they only concentrate on the one sale. Mm -hmm. But if you only do that, you're leaving potentially 90% more of money that you can make over the lifetime of that customer on the table. And so the next part of it is learning how to do email marketing. Mm -hmm. And I know from my own experience that you can make an awful lot of money doing it. There's a guy out there by the name of Frank Curran. Yep. Uh, years ago he created Mass Control and one of the bonuses was a an email marketing thing called uh, Four Day Cash Machine. And I had a list of 600 people at the time. I had a product I followed the instructions that Frank gave to the letter, and within four days, I think I made about five or six thousand dollars from a price of going to only seventeen fifty hmm. on my list. And I did it again several times, so I made a good chunk of money doing it. And that was all from email marketing, all over a period of four days, all following a structured format. So there's tons of opportunity out there. Just depends on what you want. Where do you want to go? Who do you want to serve? Mm -hmm. So we had, um, I don't know if you heard this, and um, I don't know whether we talked about that before I went live or after, but um, we're probably going to talk about email marketing next week. So that would be something that we can explore more deeply. So um, David, what about you? Um, uh, what ways uh, have you found, or are you th are you trying? Well, I'm trying a number of different ways until I find something that works very well, and <laughs> I will probably do that and then drop the other ways. Um, right now, I have a air fryer site that I'm trying to do through affiliate links. Um, I am uh, I've got my real estate website that I built in order to uh, bring in people to. Um, purchase or sell homes. I have um, a uh, local business uh, offer to purchase or to uh, build local business websites. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting ready to start uh, uh, some eBay stuff and then I go out and garage sale and sell the stuff that I buy on eBay. Mm -hmm. To supplement, supplement my income and do something temporary, see if I can get enough money coming in from that that I can relieve some time restraints. If it takes more time to do that than it does to, than what I'm making, then I'll figure out something else. Mm. So, um, so um, I love doing garage sales and, yeah, and stuff like that, and my wife loves it, so it's just getting it on the on the computer. I have a tip for you, Dave, regarding uh, eBay. Okay. Uh, 
pepper mills. What about them? Uh, if you're able to find a source of pepper mills for a low price, you can sell them for a fortune on eBay. Why? No, it's because I did it. I wound up going to a garage sale. I wound up at one point, uh, I bought a large pepper mill. Uh, been bashed up a fair bit over the years. I bought it for two bucks. I sold it for $33 on eBay. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, there mm -hmm. are there are things that if you learn how to tap into it, you pay attention. Mm -hmm. You scour a, a site like eBay for what are the top sellers. Mm -hmm. well, that's That would be a, a key thing to do. Mm. If you look for things that are selling really, really well, and then it's like, how how can I tap into that? So you, so you look for what's selling well on eBay, and then you go out to the <laughs> local yard sales and and look for those items well that's one option <laughs> the other yeah. option is looking for wholesalers looking yep. for clearance looking for liquidators oh, yeah great. and that that's 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 part of this whole deal is finding liquidations and finding wholesale because bar sales around here only work during the summer and right. Right. so you're you're really dependent on you i mean and there's it's really not I, unless you get extremely lucky there's not enough income in there to tide you over for the whole winter there's enough income to keep you going i mean you can make eight to eight hundred to a thousand dollars uh a week if you you know are real diligent and um, find good stuff it, it uh, it's out there so <laughs> i'm gonna give it a stab see what i can do it's worth a shot. I mean, yep. you never know what will happen. I mean, like when I stumbled on the pepper mill thing, I realized, holy smoke. But then the key after that was finding a source. Right. So wholesalers uh, is one option. And then liquidators would be another option. And it'll, another way to do it, to save yourself all this liquid, put up an ad. I want to buy old pepper mills. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. And so yeah. you create a form of attraction marketing for yourself mm -hmm. and you eliminate a lot of the legwork. You get a lot of what you need and then you can use it to flip it on, mm -hmm. on eBay. Wow. <laughs> okay, so eBay is, is another one. So, um, Javita, um, what about you um, uh, and, and wh what are people doing in, in uh, India? online yeah uh, I think the um, young generation is more uh, interested in blogging they are more uh, making websites and all that stuff mm. and uh, I also prefer to blog and uh, making websites for my friends and uh, that stuff mm. okay so there was a there was another one on um, making websites for others um do um in in um in mumbai or in india do do they um make use of local business like uh, you know that uh, google your business that's connected to maps yeah i have also started uh, google my business and uh, local services on a small scale uh -huh. and uh, uh, got some clients and uh, I have put them on Google Map. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting job, you know, uh, Google Map business and doing that mm -hmm. stuff, SEO. Uh, people are not that aware, but yes, slowly they are getting that mm -hmm. business. Yeah, um, I know here there are a lot of small businesses that um, when you, uh, you know, when you try to find a business of some sort using your maps which i often do with uh, when i'm out and about with my phone and then you find you find a um the name of a company or a business and no website no information on there so golden opportunities for local businesses and and often they i i find myself now when when that happens and I happen to use the business, I let them know, you know, I went looking for you and you, you don't have a website. 
Lola Land, that's actually a prime opportunity if you're a website designer to jump yeah. in and say, I'll build you one. Uh, I know. <laughs> What do you think I'm working on? business there for you. <laughs> what do you think I'm working on? <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, before, before we get too far away, regarding um, e eBay, that might be a subject we might want to explore at some point because um, I was actually talking to somebody about this a few years ago, and they said if you're just starting with them, that you don't really have any credibility and people are not inclined to buy from you because you don't have all the right stars and you don't have a decent reputation. So maybe we want to talk sometime about how to get a good reputation on e eBay in order to sell your stuff. Okay, thank you. So I, I will just to throw that out there. I will add that to my ideas list. <laughs> There, there, part of it is uh, knowing how to create a successful listing, mm -hmm. and and in the way you write your copy. It, I mean, Jake, yeah. really know that I'm sure, but but I, I did a fair bit of eBay selling at one point, and probably the single most important thing that you can do, if you want to get good results, lots of pictures, and right. as much detail as you can, mm -hmm. uh, close-ups, macro, whatever it takes. But the more pictures you have to t tell your story, mm. the better results you're going to get. That I know for sure. Yeah. So I've done it. Interesting. So now, Fred, what about you? Is that uh, making money online of any interest to you? And have you tried anything? Not at the moment, Lauren, but there is a relevancy even if you're not. If you want to start uh, any operation of any sort in a business like i believe i'm in the business of encouraging people to help young people mm -hmm. got to find a target market which is marketing and you mm -hmm. then got to address that so a lot of the systems that you require for just opening up whatever you're interested in you need to know target marketing we were talking earlier about mira cotton in her book i think it's 300 email marketing tips has just been released and I found that book very fascinating because I'm looking for a target market at the home school. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that system that I require for email marketing is exactly what I need, even though I'm not looking to monetize it at the moment. Right. There may be in the future. So one of the things that came up as you were discussing all this is where do you want to put your time? Mm -hmm. Because you can go everywhere. You can go to Alibaba and start importing stuff from China, and there's all sorts of ideas about that, or selling things on Amazon, and you import things and then put it up on Amazon. There's hundreds of ways of monetizing, mm -hmm. but, and then sell paper mills on eBay. I mean, that's a great idea, but is that really what you want to do? I mean, <laughs> look where you're going to spend your time. I mean, maybe it is what you want to do. Maybe you want to be the paper mill guru on, on the internet. Why not? Nothing wrong with that. But decide where you want to go, and then I would say, look at how you're going to market whatever it is. Now, in my case, I'm not monetizing it, but I'm looking for particularly homeschool families and email lists, and what Mira Cardan has got really works with solopreneurs. So I think that's a, mm -hmm. to me everything we've said today. Is where do you want to put your time? Where Good. are you going to find fun and enjoyment out of doing this? Because if it's going to be a burden. Like freelance writing, uh, that's Nathan's thing. That's probably not mine. Right. And I certainly shouldn't go there. So that's where I, I would say, but a lot of these techniques and tools are very valuable, whatever you want to do. So I find this valuable, and I find even, as I say, Mira Cotton's information extremely valuable yeah. in what I'm trying to do. And that is about marketing. Well, and, yeah. and we'll talk about that next week in our. In our yeah. um, yeah. Hopefully, I will have read her book. <laughs> I purchased it this morning, so <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah. It's an excellent book. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, the the other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is um, there are some people who are making money by having. Um, a YouTube channel and um, you know 
um, having having lots of traffic to their YouTube channels and um, making money from that. So, um, and I I think there's a way to do that on Twitch as well. I don't know enough about Twitch to even kind of define uh, how that's done, but I do believe there is a way of making money on on Twitch just by uh, generating lots of traffic. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned once I spoke to a man who uh, was involved in marketing on Pinterest. Right. And his area of expertise was, to me, strange that he would be using Pinterest, but that was something that he found very successful, marketing his skills on um, in sign management, how you work in the sign world of mm -hmm. helping organizations when you come to, a, say, a hospital and you want to find the signage, that's his expertise. Yet he was writing courses on it and he was selling his courses via Pinterest. And he was very mm -hmm. excited about the, what his results were. So there's many, many mm -hmm. options. But you find, you, I think you got to find what you're really interested in and where you want to spend your time and yeah. you go for it. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more on that one, Fred. <laughs> to just be doing something for the sake of making money uh, if it's not enjoyable to you, um, <laughs> eventually it becomes a drag. <laughs> so, and then you start to procrastinate, and then you go down down the hole. So, yeah. So let's see now, uh, Vivek. What about you? What? Uh, um, I know that you sold some courses or some videos or something online some years ago. Um, no, I, di I didn't sell anything. I wanted to, uh, or I tried to. Um, I tried to do it through uh, YouTube, um, but wasn't very successful. Um, with the YouTube, the major uh, limitation, if you want to make money, is uh, you need to have a large audience. Yes, you do. Only then. Uh, you can make any money at all. Um, so, YouTube is more, as I see it, it's more of a delivery platform rather than a money-making platform. Mm. Um, I can create courses and deliver it through YouTube, mm -hmm. um, but make money through YouTube, not, not quite. The, there were people who did make a lot of money, um, but you're right. You have to have loads of um, loads of um, um, subscribers. Yeah, yeah. If you have, if you have, uh, I, I think there there are quite uh, two or three different ways of making money uh, directly from YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't remember the exact name. But, uh, ways super subscriber or something like that. Uh, you you uh, you can put a comment on the uh, uh, YouTube channel or on um, as a your one of your viewers can put a comment on the uh, YouTube channel and they pay some money for that comment to be featured comment. That money comes to you. Right. Or at least part of that. So that, that is, uh, is it called super Well, then there's, then uh, similar to that is Google Ads. So if you have a website, you can have Google Ads on your website. Yeah, which... but, but Google Ads is slightly different. But this, this one works as in, as you, let's say you have a large uh, uh, following mm -hmm. and you use this feature, what happens is your comment can be dis displayed on screen. Um, uh, not not your comment. You you are you have a YouTube channel. You have a large following. One of your uh, followers puts a comment, and you feature that on the screen. And for that, effectively, they are actually paying you the money. Oh, hmm. I I haven't haven't discovered that one. Wow. So, so can I just clarify that? So Vivek, are you saying that if you have a YouTube channel, 
mm -hmm. that has a lot of subscribers, then you yep. can sell space on your channel to mm -hmm. people who want to buy advertising space. Is that the way I'm hearing it? Yeah, in a, in a way, yes. But okay. well, what, uh, you're not actually advertising their entire uh, product line or whatever. You're not giving them a uh, few seconds of ad time. But what you're saying is you, you feature their comments on the screen. Interesting. And they pay for it. Yeah. Mm. And they pay you for it. The channel. They, they, they pay YouTube and YouTube then pays you. Okay. 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 Mm. Well, and so that is a little bit similar to the Google ads that mm -hmm. um, there seem to be lots of people in uh, um, WA who are creating websites and they put those Google ads on their on their website. Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, the return from AdSense is actually it's, pretty low. Yeah. You have to have a lot of visitors. In order yeah, you to, would. I mean, to, back to in the day, from it, it, it can be very profitable if you you've got a lot of visitors. I mean, back in the day when this stuff first came into uh, play, I was using AdSense on one of my sites, and I didn't necessarily get a lot of traffic, but I do remember that I made $1,500 from AdSense at the time. So, and I remember talking with somebody about it and lamenting my misfortune, and this person said, well, do you realize that most people don't make a single penny online? All right. Uh, <laughs> this was way back in around 2004. Um, but fast forward, I mean, one success I did have, which I didn't expect, but I did have it, is I did a fishing video uh, about where I was in Mexico. And one day I remember waking up, looking at my email, or my email box, and discovered that I had uh, money in my account from Google. And I was going, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> well, it turned out that my video, which is only 59 seconds long, made on a crappy point and shoot camera, uh, without sound, it, uh, was had gone viral, and by the time it was done, I had over 2.3 million views, and I made about $1,500 off of it. So, <laughs> as to what makes something goes viral, I don't know, but I had all my marketing buddies looking at it, going, "This is one of the worst videos I've ever seen, and I love it." I mean, I, I did a point where, where I did a zoom in on the guy, and I thought that my camera had an optical zoom. It didn't. It had a digital zoom, which just essentially meant cropping out a whole bunch of pixels. So it seems like you're going in more, but it destroys the quality of the image. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that at the time. I felt like such a schmuck afterwards when I realized what had happened. But it was too late, and there were other mistakes that I made that I know that if I made a video like that again, I know what I would do to create better engagement. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it was literally titled Fishing on the Shores of, uh, Fishing with a Net on the Shores of La Paz. That was the title. <laughs> All right. So you never, you never know. So speaking of, of uh, cameras, I suppose that for, um, uh, there are lots of people who do make, make a living at taking pictures and selling their pictures online. So um, uh, selling uh, subscriptions to the uh, making use of certain pictures. Well, there is that. Uh, that's stock mm -hmm. photography and royalty free photography. But mm -hmm. in my opinion, I used to be in that business many, many years ago. Before it became the way the industry is now, I used to be involved in rights protected uh, stock photography, mm -hmm. which could make you a tremendous amount of money, hundreds of thousands of years. Um, a year until the industry evolved. I wouldn't recommend it personally, but uh, if you do something like what I did, which is when I pitched Corel, I wrote a book on how to do image manipulation using the <laughs> So I had taken all these pictures of my trip in Mexico and used them in my book. And so I got a lot of mileage out of it because I had all these images that I would, and, and different tutorials from years ago doing with images. So I was able to repurpose them. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff, like if you really want to get something happening, is to not look at the direct road to it. Like, okay, well, for example, if you want to build a house, everybody says, well, how to build a house. Well, instead of doing that, like the 10 things you need to avoid 
when looking to build a house. Um, the seven things you must consider when building a house. You, you look at you in, in writing, technical writing, freelance writing, there's the obvious straightforward approach. And then in writing, we call it the slant. In other mm -hmm. words, how can I come at this from a different angle? Because a lot of people say, oh, it's already been done. No, it hasn't. That's one approach. But what about another approach? An oblique angle. How can you look at it from that perspective? You know, the seven mistakes you need to avoid, the seven things you must do, mm -hmm. the seven sources of, of supply that you must consider. Uh, you want to build this. What do you need to know? What are the essential things you need to know before you even get started? And if you do get started and you've encountered all these errors and major problems, how do you fix these things? Mm -hmm. Every single one of those is a slant. Every single one of those is an opportunity. Can I say something at this point? Yes, you, please. Nate, Nathan was talking about photography. Quite a few years ago, I was flying back from northern British Columbia from a small town, and the lady sitting next to me was making money from her photography. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, she looks for things in nature that are the shape of letters, like A, B, C, D, E. And they're unique. And people would buy them as gifts for somebody like you want to buy something for Nathan, you would buy the letter in, which she had in nature. And it would be an interesting photography of something in nature, most likely, but it had the shape of N. Wow. And she was saying, I'm earning a lot of money just selling the alphabet for my <laughs> photography. Something very simple. Wow. But because it was so different, I mean, hers was unique. Every no one else would have the same alphabet as she did. You know, in that, and people would find it and buy it. She said, I'm doing very well. I said, that's yeah. interesting. So there's an example of being creative and yeah. just different. Yeah, Not finding, like else, so finding the slant. You find the slant. You and you said the slant in writing, the slant in photography, the slant in whatever else. Mm. So, you just, think. You just prompted that. So there are ways, even, even in photography, where it's a tough market now, mm -hmm. where just your unique approach can make money. Absolutely. I like yeah. that concept. I, I, I think that's uh, worthy of thinking through a little bit more, the slant. <laughs> it, would, it would be worth it actually doing a se session on the slant. Another aspect of how you would uh, work with something like that is what we spoke about in an earlier mm -hmm. session, which is to do with mind maps. Mm -hmm. um, but a really great way of, of creating slant opportunities would be this group, it's a case in point. Is if somebody said, well, I would like to talk about this, I'd like to look for opportunities. You know, we all have our own individual viewpoint, as you know. Right. But viewpoint can often be quite limited. And so, I think one of the things that Tim Ferriss uh, offered for our work week, somebody asked him how he spends his days. He said, well, if you're around me, it's going to be kind of boring because what I'm doing is I'm looking for something which I call the big domino, which is looking for an idea whatever it is that when, if I can find it and implement it will dramatically change everything in my business. Right. So for example, what I came up with to do with my writing a few days ago, that was a big domino, mm -hmm. a big domino. And so, and so it changes the way that you perceive things. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you open yourself up to it, like the programming I was using for myself is kind of like every day, how do I scale, how do I scale, how do I scale? And just thinking about that repeatedly, and opening myself up to the idea of the answer is going to come. And it did. And so when you create this kind of um, fertile environment in your mind, and you look at different things that can inspire you, the answer can suddenly come. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, it seems. And then you go, oh, wow, this is brilliant. And then you do a bit of research, and you found that there were people Sorry, I had I had that turned off, the phone turned off, but it rang anyway. Oh dear. <laughs> I, I'll have to call them back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um uh, okay, so I'll, I'll add the slant to uh, to our list of ideas as well because I, I think that would be 
Um, that would be uh, some interesting um, uh, way to look at things. Yeah. yeah from a writing perspective, certainly. Yeah. Enormously yeah. over the years, because mm -hmm. I can look at any topic now, and I can find like a dozen different ways of doing it, not just the direct way, which somebody mm -hmm. else has already done. Right. So I see we're we're slightly um, just after uh, the the top of the hour, and before we close, I would really like to um, include the comments that were in YouTube into this video. So I'm going to do that right now, um, so that um, people can see. And um, I thank. Um, David, for he's been uh, putting uh, various uh, links in there so that of uh, um, covering the things that we've been talking about. That's really, uh, really a, a neat thing to do. And uh, also want to uh, thank Paul Murray, uh, who's there um, um, listening in on the outside. So, um, so everybody um any parting comments that would um take us out for this morning can i just ask fred a quick question mm -hmm. fred what was the name of that book you referenced for um e emailing it's 300 email marketing tips and the lady is mira m-e-e-r-a Cotan, K O T H A N D. Mm -hmm. She just released it this weekend, but I had a preliminary copy because I reviewed it and uh, I would highly recommend looking at mm -hmm. it. It's I, called 300 Email Tips. 300 I put it in her link. In. Tips. The link is in the, on the Facebook, uh, in the Facebook comments. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I, I put her website in. I didn't find her book real easy. I, I could have got. I didn't go to Amazon yet, so um, I'm sure she got a reference somewhere in here. At least she should have if she's selling her book. <laughs> it's on Amazon for 99 cents. I just found it. Yeah, it's there. Can you paste the link. Yeah. Um, in the Facebook. All right. So. Um, uh, Fred, do you want the last word? You usually get the last word. <laughs> My only comment is Jay wasn't here today. I know. And, way, and this is probably good because he would have dominated the whole thing. Because <laughs> if anybody knows about marketing, he would have talked about <laughs> and business those, and business uh, online. It was his idea, actually. <laughs> well, in a way, I I appreciate him not being here. Not that I. But he would have really just blown us out of the water with all his ideas. He would have had a, a gazillion ideas, I know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's, I, my, I, that's my final comment. I think it went very well. Not because Jay wasn't here, but because it gave us the opportunity. It was, I think that was good. So that's my final comment from my <laughs> right. <side>. Okay. <laughs> all right. So... Um, we uh, we did cover a lot of uh, a lot of ideas for making money online. That's for sure. So I thank you all for your contributions, and uh, just by way of closing, I want to remind everyone it's important to do what you love with passion. So I will start the outro right now, and.